180 degree turn footwork. You see the 180 degree turn footwork in single whip in section 1.1. Then later on in other sections of the form, you'll see it after fan back when we do turn and chop opponent. So with single whip, it looks like this. Then that turn goes counterclockwise. So from fan through the back, the turn goes clockwise. Now let's, let's look at what's involved with the 180 degree turn. If we do the counterclockwise turn, we shift the weight back now here's an issue to be concerned about. How much weight do you shift back? Because in a classic form, you might see people shift just to 60, 40, leaving 40% 40 of the weight on this leg, the right leg in this case, and doing the turn. But if you have problems with your knee, you might want to shift the weight back to even 80, 20 to be sure that your knee does not bear strain that uh, is uh, not um, comfortable with. So we shift the weight back, we turn the waist, and we turn the right foot in as far as we can up to 135 degrees. You can see I only have about 90 degrees. We shift the weight onto the right leg pick up the heel of the left foot, allow it to turn on the ball. Then we step the left foot in, catch our balance, and step the left foot out, being careful to try to recapture hip width distance between the heels for a correct front stance. We roll down on the sole of the left foot, shift the weight, and now I'm going to have to push off the heel of my right foot to crack the fact that I didn't make it the whole 135 degrees. So I'll push off the heel as I shift the weight and adjust so that the right foot is pointing the 45 degree angle to the straight ahead direction. The clockwise turn is the same thing, only in reverse. So we shift the weight back again, be careful what proportion of weight you shift back, we turn the waist and turn the left foot in as far as we can up to 135 degrees. Well, I've done a little better with my left leg than with my right, but it's still a little short of 135. I shift the weight onto the left leg, pick up the heel of the right foot, and allow the right foot to turn on the ball. Then I'll step into center, catch my balance, then step out, trying to recapture hip width distance between the heels, roll down on the sole, and shift the weight into a good front stance proportion. That would be 60% on the right leg, and the remaining 40% on the left leg. Now, let's take a look at this uh, from another angle. I shift the weight back, I turn the waist, turn my right foot as far as I can, up to 135 degrees, shift the weight back onto my right leg, pick up the heel of my left foot, and allow it to turn on the ball. Now step my left foot in, catch my balance, and then step out, trying to calculate hip width distance. Place the heel of the left foot down, roll down on the sole, and I'll still have to make an adjustment on my right foot as I shift the weight so that it is at a 45 degree angle to straight ahead. Then let's look at the clockwise turn. Shift the weight, 
turn the waist and turn the left foot in as far as you can, up to 135 degrees, shift the weight onto the left leg, empty the right foot, step in to center, step out, the hip width distance between the heels, and I roll down on the sole, and adjust, as I shift the weight, adjust the left foot as needed. This is a very good exercise to practice to, uh, to relax your hip joints. So if I just continue to repeat this exercise like so, it's good balance training and it will eventually help loosen up the hip joints. Now you can see my left leg has loosened up enough to pretty much make the whole 135 degree turn. So just a few repetitions in this case. And right foot has also loosened up considerably. So we're facing east at the end of push. Sit, but shift the weight back, round out the arms. Be careful not to raise your shoulders, keep your shoulders down and relaxed. We turn until the forearm of the right, the right forearm points to southwest corner. Then we turn the waist back. turning the waist and shifting the weight. You'll notice that in the single whip, we have a third hand form and it's crane's beak. <clears throat> Fingers are pulled together. The wrist is stretched. Right arm points to the northeast corner when we make the crane's beak. Keep the left arm in good pong, not too close to the body, not too far away. Turn the waist and shift the weight. Now let's look at single whip from a different angle. Now I'm facing east. Now, we'll make this direction east and we'll do single whip from the other side. So the end of push. Going back to this as north, your final posture will be left hand pointing straight to the west, right arm pointing northeast, torso facing northwest, gaze to the west. Okay, finally we have we have the application for single whip. And single whip actually has several applications because you have opponents on two sides of you. So imagine first you have an opponent over here and 
from push, depending on the distance your opponent is away from you, you can do bump, cow, shoulder stroke, okay? Uh, he's a little farther back, you can do jo, elbow stroke. And if he's a little farther back yet, you can do on edge of hand. Now, to come back this way, I have another opponent over here. So from here, again, cow, jo, elbow strike. Or now we have crane's beak, so instead of just hitting with the edge of the hand, I can turn uh, my hand to the crane's beak hand form and strike the throat or strike with the fingers drawn together. <laughs> then from here, we have yet another opponent coming back on this side. He's going to punch with his uh, right hand. Now. I'm gonna block this punch. This is why it's important I have good pong here. If I'm too close, I won't be able to block the punch. If I'm too far out, my arm will be disconnected from my shoulder and the punch will crash through. So good pong, I must also have root and then I can block. Notice the weight is still back. The weight is still back. From here, I shift the weight and strike. When I block, I want to stick to his hand. I don't want to knock it away because you know I'm going to strike right here, straight in front. If I'm over here and knock the hand away, then when I strike, I'm not in the correct alignment to strike. So just, again, neutralize till your hand is even with your shoulder and then shift the weight and strike. <laughs>